so I'm no political strategist, but I would suggest that it probably has a lot to do with the Democrats not running RFK on their ticket instead of picking someone who was completely unqualified for the job. Now, they probably could have ran RFK and he would have been a better choice and probably would have won, actually, against Trump in a dead heat, or it would have been an extremely close race. But no, they didn't want someone like that. Now, I'm no political strategist and I'm no fan of Trump, but I mean, like, this was predictable. In fact, I mean, if you go back on my timeline, you can see that I predicted this. That, in fact, I predicted both the Electoral College and the popular vote for Trump. And it's just because, well, yeah, um, this, <laughs> uh, what did you expect? You have, you, you have millions and millions and millions of Americans that are trying to figure out how they're going to be able to pay their bills. They're going further into debt. The, and there's no plan for any of this. There's no exit strategy for any of this. Even with Trump, for example. You know, I mean, he's, he's got a couple of cute ideas and we'll see if he actually implements them, but more than likely we're gonna hear four years of excuses about why that Trump with a Republican Senate and a Republican House were unable to get anything done because some obscure judge in Portland kept putting injunctions on everything That's the, that nobody's ever heard of and you know pulling out laws that no one's ever heard or seen from and the lawyers have to go back and try and figure out where those laws say that, that they can do these. I'm like, that's what's coming from all of this in my prediction. So yeah, I mean, why is all this happening? Well, I mean, this is all fairly predictable stuff and it all could have been avoided by just having better candidates. But, you know, we saw way back in like, what was it? I think it was uh, sometime in August when there was that uh, debate between Biden when Biden was, or I think it was July when Biden was still uh, part of the fray and he was debating Trump and it was a complete disaster. And it was a disaster for both of them, frankly. I called that back then too, that it was a complete total disaster between the two of them. It was a massive shit show. And um, yeah, and an insult to America, to the American people who were trying to figure out how they're gonna pay their bills. No, this, this, this election has to do with, you know, the people hoping against hope that some of what Trump is talking about is actually gonna work. Now, I mean, if he actually did deport whatever's 50 million illegals, which is what it is, and then actually closed the border and didn't allow any legal immigration for a while, for at least a couple of years, I would say at least five, then yeah, maybe you'd see domestic wages start coming up. You'd start seeing mega corporations losing lots of money. You'd start seeing uh, houses and land coming down, like crashing in prices to the point where people could actually afford them. I mean, you might see these kinds of things. I don't think he's gonna do any of that. I think that it's, he's just gonna probably pour gasoline on it. Or worse, we're gonna just have more and more debt. And by the time he leaves office, we'll be somewhere in the neighborhood of $55 trillion in the hole instead of $36 trillion in the hole by this weekend, I think. I think it's by this weekend we hit the $36 trillion mark, and it's no end in sight. Um, is he going to cut off any foreign aid? No, probably not. In fact, that number will probably go up. Um, are any of the any of the troops going to come home? Again, probably not. Uh, is you know, I mean, like, is, is any of this stuff really going to change that's going to be palpable? I doubt it. Now, hey, I hope I'm wrong. I really do. I hope I'm wrong on all of this. I hope that maybe Trump does get in there and say, all right, let's start slashing government down to nothing. Let's start actually firing all these government agencies. Let's close down. Let's think of like the top, maybe let's say two to 300 high profile alphabet agencies that we can just close completely, fire all those people, send them home and replace it with absolutely nothing, including NGOs, not replacing it with NGOs, which I think is probably what's gonna end up happening for most people. And of course, those NGOs will be owned by BlackRock, Vanguard, State Street. Like, I mean, I don't know why everybody is freaking out about this, really on the, I mean, all you're gonna see is just the government sector, you know, you're gonna trade, they're trading monopoly for monopsony. That's all that's gonna end up happening with all of this. So, sorry to put such a, you know, such a, a frankly a boring spin on all of this but this is going to be same shit different term and uh, all that's going to happen for most people is you're going to be four years older four years less fertile and four years broker